Canaveral. We have John Doyle there live to cover the GOES launch, and hopefully we'll keep our fingers crossed and make sure we get a launch this go-around. John, how's it going in that area? Very well, Dennis. The clouds have broken in about the last hour or so. It actually looks like it's clearing off. Had a little uh, light rain earlier this morning, uh, but apparently that's going to go uh, the way of the wind. So we're not really concerned. We're looking downrange here at the 3920 series rocket sitting just about a half mile away from us on launch pad 17A. That uh, light rain all gone. Now there would be cause for concern if we had a thunderstorm in the area with lightning and strong winds. Generally, they're uh, fairly light right now. It did have a little wind shear report at about 17,000 feet. That, again, appears to pose no problem. So it's still go for go 7 in just over an hour from now. Reporting live from Cape Canaveral for the Weather Channel, this is John Doyle. Thank you very much, John. Good news. We're a little bit over an hour away from hopefully a successful launch of GOES H, which will become GOES 7. We'll keep our fingers crossed and tune back to John Doyle live from Cape Canaveral in about 25 minutes from now. We're all set up and ready to start. Parkway, Atlanta, Georgia, 3033. Top of the air, keeping a very close eye on Cape Canaveral. We have our own John Doyle in the area live to monitor the launch of GOES 7. What's the latest on the update now, John? Well, Dennis, it seemed that things were going a little too well. It's about uh, 13 minutes from the uh, actual uh, kind of combined uh, time of blast off, but uh, apparently a weather balloon indicated some unfavorable upper winds. So what they're going to do is release another weather balloon to double-check those winds on the, uh, in the upper atmosphere. They will stop the countdown at T minus 4. The problem is that uh, the balloon data is going to take 40 minutes to be uh, all uh, figured out, decided what they want to do with that, and that means they're not going to make the 6.05 the earliest possible window on that. So it means it could be toward the 6.38 or the very end of the period. Looks like we're in for at least a 15 to 20 minutes hold anyway uh, as far as the liftoff itself goes. Again, they will release another weather balloon to confirm the original findings. Live from Cape Canaveral for the Weather Channel, I'm John Doyle. Thank you very much, John. Uh, we'll continue to monitor the situation and keep you updated. Again, right now, the established window by NASA and the crew down at Cape Canaveral is between 6.05 and 6.38. It's necessary to get the rocket up at that uh, approximate time with this new information of sending up a weather balloon to monitor the upper-level winds. That will delay it as much as 15 to 20 minutes, as John explained, but it doesn't look like it's outside that 6.38 window. So we'll keep you informed. Looks like a little bit of a delay, but still we have our fingers crossed for a launch today of GO-7. Now, back into the regular situation across the country, we have Will Annan. Moving Here, our in. special coverage of GO's launch continues. This is Bill Keneally along with Janetta Jones. I'm Dennis Smith. As we focus in on the situation throughout the Cape Canaveral area, we're continuing to monitor a slight delay to find out the latest and what we can expect. Let's turn once again live at Cape Canaveral with our own John Doyle. John? Thank you, Dennis. It looks like now that the launch could possibly come at the very end of the window, which originally was 6.05 to 6.38. It's really pushing that uh, later limit now. They have discovered some upper-level winds uh, that velocity alone is not a problem, but it's a combination of the velocity and the direction of the winds that puts them 180% above what the engines on the rocket could correct for. So they have deployed a weather balloon. It is actually in sight uh, from here. It's one of the big silver ones. It's going to take approximately 30 minutes from now to actually analyze that data. There's also a weather aircraft in the area that's uh, checking out a mid-level deck of clouds that is acceptable. That is no problem. The uh, heck of it all is that the uh, vehicle is, uh, the preparation on that is complete. The spacecraft has had no problems, but the winds in the last half hour or so have developed in the upper levels to be in an unacceptable uh, speed and, uh, and direction. Caution has been the watchword at Cape Canaveral all this week. A fuel leak brought things to a halt Monday evening for 24 hours. NASA officials do not want a repeat of the failure that occurred last year when we lost our first GO-7 satellite attempt in an explosion shortly after takeoff. Now, if this should happen again, we face a future with only one rather tired GO-6 weather satellite until at least late 1989. Jim Womack, the NASA launch director, says that uh, we're go as far as uh, all of the other parameters, except for that wind and its velocity. The spacecraft is ready to go. The gyros have been aligned. They're all set. So we're, what we're sitting at now is T minus four and holding for an indefinite period of time. We'll keep you updated and reporting live from Cape Canaveral for the Weather Channel. I'm John Doyle. Thank you very much, John. We'll have continued update reports from John Doyle live from Cape Canaveral. Again, the yellow flags are out, I guess you could say, as we're 
cautiously watching the winds aloft uh, for this launch of GO-7. We'll keep our fingers crossed, and again, John Doyle will keep us updated. Back into our regular programming five seconds away from Skier's forecast and determining the high-level winds, but right now we haven't any feedback as of what are the speed of those winds, so we'll keep you updated and keep you informed if you tune in to see the GOES launch. It's been delayed. We'll have a report from John Doyle coming along quite quickly, so please stay with us here on the Weather Channel. Right now to focus on... the air to focus in on what's going on and give you an update of what's been happening. I know you expected to tune in and find out about the GOES launch going on at this time. There has been a delay. There was concern about the upper level winds. They sent up a weather balloon. It determined that the winds were a little bit strong. They sent up a second weather balloon. We have not retrieved all the weather data back from that balloon as of yet. So the end result is we're kind of in the yellow caution flag, sort of say, and we're waiting to hear some information. It could be as late as 6.30. I understand that the window for the launch it was originally 6.05 to 6.38, has now been established at about 6.48. They can get the uh, launch still up into space. So we'll keep our fingers crossed. As soon as we have any information from John Doyle, who's covering the action for the Weather Channel live in Cape Canaveral, we'll keep you informed. Bill Keneally is standing by to focus in on what's going on all across the country. It's been snowing out there in Dickinson, North Dakota. Snowing like crazy in Casper and on down there in Colorado already. We've had locally better than three and a half feet of snow in places like Hannigan Meadows in Utah. They have picked up around 42 inches of snow. Back east, another in a series of fine days, a lot of sunshine. Not all that chilly right now, 39 degrees at Newark, 38 degrees in clear skies in Providence. And again, the high cloud cover is way down the Ohio Valley and on down in Tennessee. That's where that cloud cover begins to lower and thicken. Still a lot of rain in Texas around Galveston, Beaumont, Port Arthur. Scattered rains in Florida's Panhandle, but from about the uh, launch site southward, a lot of sunshine. Our special coverage of the GO satellite launch still focusing in on Cape Canaveral. John Doyle's been there live to cover all the action, and he has this updated report. John? Thank you, Dennis. I'm afraid that about seven minutes ago, Delta Launch Control announced that today's flight has been scrubbed. That means there'll be at least a 24-hour turnaround. We will plan for the same window of time, that is from approximately 6.05 to 6.38, this time tomorrow. Now, they will be planning to go at the earlier time. We have gotten a 10-minute extension from Goddard Space Flight Center because of problems that had developed with the upper air winds that put unacceptable levels, 180% above the amount of uh, winds that the engines of the rockets uh, could correct for. So we were on an indefinite hold in any case. The preliminary data analysis from the computers at Huntington Beach, California, came back still 140% above acceptable levels. And so the decision was made to scrub it for today. We'll try again for tomorrow. Incidentally, that time period, the 6.05 to 6.38, is still good right on through March 1st. It's a beautiful shot of the rocket, and I'll tell you, some of the shivers we're feeling here are not just because it's 64 degrees and dropping. Reporting live from Cape Canaveral for the Weather Channel, I'm John. The same channel, right here at the Weather Channel at 6.05 for the launch tomorrow evening. We'll continue our coverage throughout the afternoon and evening to keep you updated. Very important launch of the GO Satellite H. Once it's in position, GO 7. It has been delayed once again 24 hours, so stay with us again for tomorrow evening, and we'll attempt to get the old bird up.